Branding. Branding is a choice, right? People have choices every single day, whether to go to Whole Foods, whether to go to Safeway, whether to go to grocery outlet, save on, you name it. And in this case, in real estate, things that people like, right? We heard about one of the speakers talked about why did they get into real estate money? Well, look at this example here. We have two cars. Now, both cars are going to get you from point A to point B the same exact way. You could even have a, an older car. It will get you point A to point B the same way. One is a Rolls Royce. One is a Honda. Why do people choose a Rolls Royce over a Honda, right? Or a Honda, if you're a multimillionaire and you can have both, why maybe do you not have a Rolls Royce? So branding is key. Branding is key because it's about choice. It's about style. It's about value, perception, right? Emotion. You know, first time home buyers buy based on what? Emotion. I want this house. I want all these different features. I want this room to be this way. I want the skylight here. Oh, this is amazing. I will live here forever. And then you end up selling them, hopefully, a home, you know, in five years down the road, a couple years down the road, investment properties and whatnot. So the key with branding is you want to deliver results in valuable experiences today. Experiences are key. We have different demographics. We have the baby boomers who were traditionally, you know, buying the real estate, good pensions, financial stability. We have in the Bay Area, obviously, the tech economy, which is a small, you know, we hear tech, 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 but we still have janitors, right? We still have firefighters. We still have a whole group of people in the Bay Area that are buying real estate. So think about the experience that you're giving to your customer rather than being a commodity in a sense of cars, right? A Honda versus a Kia, a coffee shop versus another coffee shop. What makes you want to go to Starbucks coffee over Pete's coffee? Personal branding. We have two famous people here, Oprah Winfrey and Michael Jordan, who if you are younger than me uh, at the end of the millennial cusp, maybe you don't know Michael Jordan, but one of the greatest basketball players of all time, Steph Curry is uh, for, the, for our younger Gen Z realtors would be more familiar with Steph Curry probably. So with personal branding, one, something you need to start thinking about is, do you have following, right? If you're doing you know, 10 transactions a month, five transactions a month. Odds are you have a following that maybe you haven't thought about, how do I build this out? How do I become more of a brand, more of a presence where this following and the people who are loyal to me can start referring more, where they want to engage with me more for different insights, for the value I'm providing weekly, monthly, yearly, however you do. And then from there in personal branding, we have services, right, in real estate, we also have products, different products in real estate. So Kelvin mentioned the wood sign. You know, what's, what's that touch point? In, in the case of Michael Jordan, he has licensing agreements, right? Air Jordans, think about that. Every Nike shoe is really made the same. It's, it's rubber, it's, you know, padding, cloth, all these different things. But when you put that Air Jordan and that, that logo on there and the swoosh, next thing you're selling a shoe for $110. So if you're thinking about how do I get into luxury real estate, how do I up level? I want to be there in the million, in the million dollar club. I want to be top producers. These little things like that, differentiating is key. From there on your branding, I want you to also start thinking about your passion. Is this something that you want to invest in? Because to build a personal brand is far greater than putting an intro video, slapping up a logo, it's a commitment. So this has to be in your mind, a real business. And then from there, we talked about teams today. Are you building within Sequoia, your own team? How do you brand your own team? How do you attract people to your team? Not every team do people always want to play on. People want to play on a different team because they like the Chicago Bulls red. Other people like blue. Other people like this. There's a lot of psychology involved in branding that you have to take into account as to why people want to join the team. And then platform building, multiple channels, thinking about social media, thinking about website. Once you start getting bigger, who's managing this for you, right? There gets to a point, a, a tipping point, as you know, in real estate, where if you're doing a few transactions a month, it's manageable. You have the support. Next thing you get to maybe 10 or you're doing 20 transactions a month, we start needing support. So the same is true with building a reputable personal brand from managing the website, from managing these other things. Um, you know, you can do it on your own to start, but in the end, it takes time. So we don't have pens and paper like we would have at a normal conference, but I want you to take just 30 seconds. Go, go, go. 
What is your favorite brand and why? Think about that. Right now, just write it down if you can. If you're on an iPad or technology, that's how you want. Go ahead. Who is your ideal customer? In real estate, when I work with new agents, they say, well, I want to sell you know, this, this $10 million home. But doesn't everybody? Everybody wants to sell a $10 million home. The commissions are great. Now, what's the reality of that? Are you in that club? Is that your network? Do you hang out where the people who have $10 million homes hang out? You know, what does that look like? Or are you an awesome person starting out with first time home buyers? Because that's where you're at. That's the people that will gravitate towards you. Hey, I, you know, I, I use this zero down payment or I did a VA loan. I did X, Y, Z and I bought my first home. And then a year later, I bought this home. Right. So who are those ideal customers? What are your talking points? How do you speak with people? How do you engage? How do you inter interact? What is your brand? Is it serious? There are realtors out there that you know are very, very serious, right? Then there are the fun realtors out there. Then you have energetic realtors. Then you have luxury realtors. Then you have sustainable brands like green and all these different colors in a sense, right? We, we don't use XYZ paper. We, you know, docu-sign everything. We, we are committed to the environment. What are those talking points? What are your values? And then what are the top three reasons people like doing business with you? Really think about that. So hopefully you've done that. I can't see your screen because I'm going through this PowerPoint right now. Uh, and then on there, the elevate your brand. So elevating your brand is taking it to that next level. Maybe you say, oh, I have my name on things or a business card. What are, what's your logo? What are your colors? What are your touch points? I want you to think about, too, when somebody goes through a restaurant, right? We heard about the restaurant business. When you see on Yelp, maybe you're a Yelper and you love to Yelp online reviews. And then you see those Yelps, this experience was great. And then we got into the restaurant and the tablecloth was dirty or the bathroom was, ugh. the same is true in real estate. You have multiple journeys. And in working with Kelvin, we've gone through all the different technology, all the different processes, right? So if you're finding different things like that, that's a good time to communicate too with leadership and say, hey, this, is, this, this could be improved a little bit better. You can engage more you know, with Kelvin and the leadership team and say, I think these different areas would be great ways to improve the brand, the experience, right? These touch points. So I want you to think about touch points. What are those touch points? You know, do you have your own little stationary kit? Do you have, what do you give your clients when they buy a home? I mean, literally the people just spent maybe 500,000, a million, $10 million with you. And then eh, I don't want to buy them champagne or eh, eh, like mindset. Okay. So all the little touch points. Your website, everybody should have a personal website, your first name, last name.com. You can always control it no matter where you go. Hopefully you stay in real estate. If you go into financial planning or whatever, whatever, you always have your first name, last name.com. It's great. So you can control your reputation out there. And the good thing on this is when you're on Google and you type in your first name, last name, and I want you guys to do this later, see what comes up, see what reviews come up, see what, see what is out there floating around about you. Because that's what people will see when they search for you. And when they're taking that deeper dive into, do I want to work with this person or not? Strategic alliances and co-branding. Once you have an established brand, start thinking about who else can you work with in your industry? What conferences can you attend? How can you get out there? Is this the right brand fit for me? Should I stay away from that brand? Before I speak at different events, I look at people's social media. I look at different things. I try to see what their values are because I need to make sure it's the right fit. I don't want to be with a brand that's in cancel culture, right? That would be terrible. So think about your reputation and, and who you're also co-branding with because it's very important in today's online thing that the minute you put something out there, it's out there forever. So lead magnets, how are you conveying value? Um, one of the things that, you know, Kelvin and I worked on was there's a brochure at Sequoia. If you're not using it, you should use it. And it has a really nice thing about how we go about listing the home. There's, there's a template. You can ask Kelvin for it. If you haven't got it, you know, make sure you, you get that. And then you can put your picture in there. You can have it edited a little bit. What are these touch points that you're giving to people that set you out? So somebody has something also that's valuable, both physically and digitally today. Transparency and results. I cannot say this enough. People need to know you're the real deal. They need to know that you sold X, Y, Z. Some people that I've worked with in reals, I don't, I don't want to put out there how much we've sold. Why would you not do that? It's credibility versus, 
you know, an investor who has a $10 million deal, $20 million deal, they want to know that you've done those things. Or if you haven't, what have you done? And as you're building your, you know, your brand, if you're a new agent, there are ways to message things strategically as well, where it doesn't come across that, oh, I haven't done a deal. You know, there are different ways, you know, you have a background in finance or investing, or you have an MBA, or you have, you know, really good financial background. So think about how you are being transparent, the results, your messaging. We heard this earlier today. Do you attract people or do you promote? Are you the nightclub promoter or are you the person offering a ton of value? The workshops I'm doing right now are usually one to two hours. This is 10 minutes for me to cram in a ton of value for you guys. Offer value, be magnetic, stay consistent. Do you have a niche or are you generalist? Create your tribe and know where they hang out online and in person and show up present. When you're with people and you're engaging, you're in a human business, one of the biggest skills out there today, if you read uh, things from Deloitte, you read, different, you read different things that are out there, soft skills development is lacking. Why? Well, we have these things, right? We have cell phones. So the next generation, they're not being trained how to engage one-on-one. -on -one. So maybe you've got some seniority on the team. You're like, eh, I'm trying to help this young realtor. Understand, you know, there's a social dilemma movie out there. We won't get into a lot of that. But understand the conditioning, understand those things. So when people are trying their best, they need training. They need development to learn how to be more communicative and better with their soft skills in the environment that we're in today, where everything is just so text message based and this and that. You lose context. That's one of the biggest things you lose context. So make sure with your brand, you have good context around it. Sales and marketing. I can't stress this enough. When you're building a personal brand, you need to know the difference between sales and marketing. And oftentimes in real estate, people get so far out on marketing, which is great. And then they lose track on sales. Kelvin, you and I have talked about this, right? So, you know, with, with agents that you can be on social media all day long, but if social media is not netting you new clients and you're not building your farm area in real estate, you don't have your brand dialed in, you don't have these basic things dialed in and you're not doing sales. Well, it's going to be very difficult. So remember, Marketing, great marketing supports sales, okay? So you need the briefs, you need the, the pamphlets, you need those things, but you have to do the sales work. And sales, there's no easy out in sales. Sales is work. So know that, know the difference between those. If you haven't taken a professional sales training, I offer one on my website. You can take one there to learn the difference between sales and marketing. Know the sites to show up on, how their platforms work. Everything's via algorithms today. So how do you get your brand to the top? How do you blog? How do you increase SEO? All these different things. It's a strategy. It's not just, I want a website. I want a logo. I want X, Y, Z, all these things. You have to put it together to have results. If you just go with the transactional and the piecemeal approach, it's not going to result in exactly what you think it will result in. So it's the brand strategy. Manage your online reputation. And then is the customer always right? Is the customer always right? Let's let's hear it in the in the in the comments. I'll, I'll look I'll look in a little bit, but no, they're not always right. So you have to have a good communication strategy. You have to have a good messaging around. Hey, we did this. This is the process we explained to you. Da 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 da. So you're managing your online reputation because if you know you did everything ethically, 110 percent, the best way that you could, and then this person's just ugh, you need to manage that in the online space as well. Um. Employer branding. Employer branding is key. We talked about this on the team level, right? So Sequoia is a brand. Keller Williams is a brand. You make choices when you join something. The fire department, where I came from, is a brand. People will go to the fire department in New York that pays half the salary of any Bay Area fire department because they want to work for the fire department in New York. It has an incredible brand, legacy, story, tradition, culture. Uh, experiences, opportunity, all those things. And we heard today, it's not always about the money. So brand is really key. If you're growing your agency or if you're growing your team, think about brand. Brand also helps you with talent attraction, retention. And then today, purpose, values, difference. Be bold. Don't be boring. If I can tell you anything today, be bold. Don't be boring. There's so much noise out there. Everybody looks the same. Everybody's got a suit on. Be bold. Don't be boring. Okay. Go for it. If you're thinking, oh, I want to put some color in my brand. Oh, I, I like pink or I like a little bit, whatever. 
go for it. Like Marissa, she has awesome purple hair. You know, her brand is purple End the story. Like that's that. Right. And then there's transparency and there's results. Align messaging, making sure that there are social media standards between the employer, you know, and the, and the big brand, which would be Sequoia. And then if you start an agency team, you need to have cohesion in there because what you don't want is disjointed messaging things that, you know, the team's putting out versus that, you know, are against, you know, the values of the parent company. So making sure you're working together as you're growing a, you know, a team in your, in your practice and with, with your own brand. And then also what's in it for them, what's in it for the employee, the model shifting right now, it, you have to communicate these things. Why is this a great company to be with? Why is my team the best team to be with instead of all these other teams with top producers? You know, what, what, what's the exchange, right? And it's not always about the money. So with brand strategy, wrapping this up, know your ideal customers. You have to do research and insights to build a strong brand and a brand that has ROI. Also developing your brand, your logo, your messaging, your content, your website. There's a lot to it. And this is what I help people with is putting the whole strategic plan in place step by step. So this is not overwhelming and it's actually actionable. And then we have a timeline. It's like, all right, three months. Here we go. Six months, a year. This is what this looks like. And then stay focused on what gets results while innovating. There's always new ideas. New ideas are incredible. But there are certain things in every single industry that generate the basic core results of the business. So making sure we're staying focused on that. And then reviewing metrics. I review my metrics all the time. Feedback and then engineering the brand for success. Always working on the brand, working on different things. How can you improve user experience in the online space, digital space to get more conversions, different things, right? There's a lot that goes into it. And then lastly, I just want to let you know your significance is not determined by your headshot and resume. It's determined by your heart. So always lead with your heart for your brand. People will want to be around you. They'll want to join you and they'll want to help you grow. I mean, it just if, if you lead with your heart, you can't go wrong. Uh, and then lastly, you can contact me here at DrewAversa.com.